2 Peter 3, 1. This second epistle, beloved, I write unto you, in both which to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words that were spoken by the holy prophets and of the commandment of the apostle of Yeshua our Savior. Peter is writing this letter asking the readers to remember what was spoken by the prophets and what was spoken by Yeshua, the Old and the New Testament. They both are equally important. One can't be read without the other. Peter goes on from here to discuss the end times. I also like discussing the end times. I'm pretty sure the majority of us understand that we're deeply in it. The power structure in place can be broken at any time. All on the earth will have to endure the stressful times ahead. They have already begun. I encourage those who may not know to read the scriptures all the way through to be better prepared. As Peter said, my hope is to stir up your pure minds. Read both old and new, connect the dots, it's all there. For the purpose of this video, I would like to go over the things that will help save us from the trouble ahead. What will save us in these troubled times are the commandments. I want to go over some scriptures that show or illustrate the commandments predate Moses and postdate the death and resurrection of Yeshua. Can we read Genesis 38, starting with verse 7? And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Most High, and the Most High slew him. And Judah said to Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed unto thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Most High, wherefore the Most High slew him also. To understand what's taking place, we don't need Bible commentary. All we need to do is accept what it says. Onan spilled his seed because he knew the child would not be his. Onan was aware of the commandments. It was hundreds of years before Moses received the commandments at Mount Sinai. The laws of the highest are from the beginning till forever. The Most High killed Onan because of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 the commandments were made clear to israel but judah onan and starting with abraham understood perfectly the commandments of the highest they were the chosen seed can we read deuteronomy 25 starting with verse 5 if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child the wife of the dead shall not marry a stranger her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duties of a husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed the name of his brother which is dead, and that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate of the elders and say, My husband's brother refused to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it, means if he doesn't change his mind and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto the man that will not raise up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that has his shoe loose. It's unfortunate that we have been taught to express ourselves in accordance with society instead of the commandments. So we will not like the way the story sounds. The whole idea of a man marrying his brother's wife after he's dead doesn't sound good to us. But if we take a closer look, the Most High has respect for the death of an Israelite. It's an important thing that his bloodline carries on. And also a brother should love his brother enough that he would want his bloodline to continue. So we can see perfectly here that you can't separate the Most High from his commandments. The commandments are from the beginning to the end. So let's read Acts 23, starting with verse 1. Paul earnestly beheld the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good consciousness before Elohim until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, Elohim shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For thou sittest to judge me after the law, and command me to be smitten contrary to the law. And they stood by and said, Vilest, 
Elohim's high priest? Then Paul said, I did not know he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. At this point in Acts, Paul has been incarcerated due to the content of his preaching. The high priest commanded those standing near Paul to strike him as he began to speak in his own defense. Paul, mad after getting punched, disrespects the high priest. After Paul discovers that Ananias is the high priest, he apologizes because Paul does not want to be guilty of breaking the Most High's commandments. We have to be just according to the Most High's commandments, even if those around us are breaking it. So what Paul is going by is written right here in Exodus 22, verse 8. Thou shalt not revile the God, nor curse the ruler of thy people. It's evident that Paul is serious about adhering to the commandments even after being struck. It's obvious that the commandments were here before Mount Sinai and the commandments are here long after Yeshua's death and resurrection. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below.